Welcome into another OUA season preview, this time with the Waterloo Warriors head coach, Chris Bertoia, uh, all set and ready to go for training camp. It was a tough year last year, but as we just talked about, it was a lot of close games that could have gone either way, and this Waterloo Warriors team seems ready to bounce back. Uh, so we'll start it off, coach. We'll start there, I guess. Yeah. One and seven. To change it around, what's the biggest difference that's going to come from the Waterloo Warriors this year to do that? Well, you know, we're still undefeated right now, so that's a good feeling heading into camp tomorrow. <laughs> um, you know, one and seven, really, I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a glasses half full kind of guy, uh, positive expectations. The only way we can go is up. Um, certainly, uh, you know, evaluated, reflected on the year we had last year. It was certainly not the where we wanted to be, um, you know. The goal here, obviously, the goal everywhere is to be a Vanier Cup champion. But uh, you know, but first you got to make the playoffs and 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 get to the dance. And so, you know, that's something that, from a consistency standpoint, has been a goal of mine as the head coach. And um, you know, last year, you know, the the expectation that that is that 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 was a blip on the screen, right? And uh, moving forward with only positive expectations, um, and we come to that with with, you know, the guys falling in love with the process and the process is when the lights are, are, are not shining. Right. And, you know, when they're grinding it out at 6 a.m. morning runs and lifts and, and, and we had a really, really, the, you know, and, and, you know, I'm sure coaches say, it, and I might've said it before, you know, but I really feel like, uh, you know, this was our best off season uh, under my tenure as head coach here, um, just with the collective buy-in from the, from the student athletes and and the work ethic, you know, and we had a pretty regimented schedule and, and really, really uh, established a standard of accountability. And, and uh, you know, um, I thought we had a great, great winter term, obviously, you know, every school gets into that, you know, spring term, you know, summer where, um, you know, 50% of your guys go home to work and everything like that. And, you know, they're checking the boxes that they're lifting and, and checking in in that regard, but we'll, we'll see tomorrow when they all show up. But I know the 50, we had 55 guys uh, in, in Waterloo this off season, and it really was beneficial, and, you know, with, with indie practices, uh, captives practices, uh, you know, being able to, for them to get out and do football stuff together along with, you know, lifting four or five days a week under, under the tutelage of uh, our strength coach, Andrew Graham. So, yeah, you were, you know, cautiously optimistic. Obviously, uh, everyone goes in with high expectations. If you're not going in with high expectations, then what are you in the business for? Um, so, yeah, I'm excited uh, for for where, where things are at, you know, and, and just with a young team that that is now taking that next step. And, and, and certainly we need guys to step up and, and start making plays and be the football players that we recruited them to be. And you mentioned young team there just at the end. You know, Nolan Caban last year, young quarterback, first full season as a starter. 1600 yards 10 touchdowns what impressed you most about him last season and and what are those next steps that you you see him taking well you know nolan nolan's a you know he's a smart kid he's got some he's got some moxie you know um something that we do in our evaluation of, of quarterbacks when we're uh when we're recruiting them um you know there's there's five categories for each position and and the one that's exclusive to the quarterback position we call it the dude quotient, right? Like he's a dude, right? And, and um, he's got that moxie, you know, and, and, you know, sometimes that moxie got him in trouble because you failed to talk about the 17 interceptions he threw. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's the one thing, you know, Nolan had a great off season. He's certainly motivated, um, you know, and he's had a great off season because he is motivated by um, our two, you know, two guys that are in their first year going into now heading into their second year and, in uh, Nick Orr and Matt Lynn, uh, both very good football players. And, and uh, you know, we're uh, – it's – it's it, we haven't decided on who QB1 is going to be yet. Uh, so we're going into training camp with a, a three-headed monster. Um, they've certainly it's, – it's a good QB room, talented kids. Uh, you know, they have skill sets. Uh, they all can run pretty well, you know. Nobody can run like Trey Ford, but they can, they, they can pull the ball down and get you 20 or 30 yards and they can still run, you know, the read zone stuff. And, and uh, so they're all very capable, strong arms, you know, it's really going to be coming down to the evaluation and, 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 you know, protecting the football really, um, but still while still executing our offense and our offense, you know, we do like to take shots and, and, you know, those intermediate, you know, 14 to 16 yard routes and, you know, um, you know, we can't limit interceptions by just throwing five yard checkdowns all the time. Checkdowns are great, but, you know, so, so it's, it's going to be a battle. And so we, uh, 
kind of already have everything scripted up for giving them an equal and fair opportunity. Um, and then, uh, you know, we're doing a, uh, we're doing an integrated practice, a crossover practice with Western Western's coming down here since we don't have them in, uh, in the regular season. And obviously my old boss over there, Greg, uh, um, he's going to bring the guys down, you know, I fully expect, you know, Western and, and Queens probably to be the favorites. Uh, you know, they're, they got good squads returning and, and, uh, so for us, it's kind of uh, in preparation for Ottawa. Uh, we're on the road to start, and Ottawa had a mm-hmm. very, very good year last year. And certainly, there's turnover in every program. But I know Coach Belfay is doing a great job there, and they're recruiting a ton in the SAGEP. You know, so they're going to have older, more ready players that are that are in that freshman year. And um, so I thought we thought uh, it would be good to have Western come down and and uh, sharpen us up. So. Um, after that, we're going to probably decide on the QB one and, and what that position looks like. So, um, like I said. Nolan did, you know, minus the 17 interceptions. I, I thought he did very well. He he had some good rushing stats as well. And and you know, I think he's a very, very capable quarterback. And and you know, he needs to just he needs to step up and make that next step and, and just make good decisions um and not give the ball away. And and I think if he can do that, he'll probably secure that number one spot just because you know he does have the the in-game experience now, right? And going with uh with the, one of the other two guys who have tremendous upside and they've had tremendous off seasons. Um, you know, the one thing that's always a wrinkle in there is that they don't have the game experience. At least Nolan does have that under his belt, but we'll wait and see. Now, coach, I'm curious. Uh, and I want our listeners to be able to get a sense of what does an even split quarterback battle look like in your training camp? Is it just everyone's getting equal balance reps through 11 on 11? Are they all getting to work with the ones and twos and threes, or is it specifically with each group? Yeah, we're, we're, we're breaking it down from an evaluation standpoint where, you know, one day, you know, day one is QB one is, you know, command, let's say, and then yep. day two QB one's Madeline and then day three is it's Nick or so it's kind of, so we can have a comparable, we're comparing apples to apples versus, you know, um, you know, it's hard. Well, you're, you're working with say the young group that's just learning the offense and guys are running, busting on routes and now it looks, makes the quarterback look, <laughs> look bad. Right. So we're kind of giving them, that's kind of how we're breaking down the equal and fair opportunity, mm-hmm. um, is through that uh, distribution of reps. And, uh, some of the beautiful, uh, parts of having playmakers back is you get guys like James Basilega, Justin Sukar. Uh, who make a ton of plays for you downfield talk to the kind of leadership opportunities they have where you do have this young team who's growing from last year but you still have these key pivotal pieces that can provide that role yeah you know getting Jay Bass back was good and and certainly he's he's full of um, fuel right you know um, I mean it is what it is uh I told the guys, you know, last year, I, I was shocked he wasn't an OUA All-Star. In, I mean, even an All-Canadian. And uh, at the end of the day, though, there's, you know, you got to win, you know, and then that's where it re- reverts back to team success equals individual, you know, accomplishments. Mm-hmm. And, and there's truth to that. You just look at the teams that are getting guys named or, or winning teams. And, <laughs> and so, you know, he was a little dejected there and then he didn't get drafted when, you know, he tested quite well and, and, uh, had an opportunity with the the Rough Riders, but he, we did get out there. He's he's 100 now, but uh, you know he's coming back to to prove people you know, wrong. But also he's coming back with good intentions. You know his his younger brother uh, Evan Basileg is our H back, and he's going into his second year, and I think he's he's a kid to watch. And and you know being able to play with with his younger brother, being able to play with his teammates, and being in that leadership role. James is has never been a real natural leader. He's a pretty good, quiet, uh, you know, has quiet mannerisms and, um, you know, but uh, he, he's got a good smile, likes to have fun, but but he's not like a go-go, you know, cheerleading type, uh, get him going type guy. But, you know, we've asked him to step outside of his comfort zone this year and and be more of a leader. And, and you know, his legacy is is not just making plays on the field. It's it's leaving the, you know, the locker room in a better place than when he got here. And, and certainly uh, – you know, we're having high expectations for James to take that leadership role. Justin Sukar is very similar, you know, um, Sukes is, you know, he's healthy, ready to go. And, and he is, he's electric, you know, and when he gets the ball in his hands, he can do some special things. And, and, you know, the big thing with him is that, you know, keeping him healthy, right. He's been often injured. So he has, you know, two good games and then, 
he's banged up and he's off the, you know, he's basically on the IR for a couple of games. So having him here consistently here and, and have him healthy for eight games would be a huge piece. And, but he, uh, he's a, he's a worker. Like, I mean, he's a worker lead by example guy, but certainly very intelligent and, uh, and has taken a leadership role um, this off season. It's just, you know, jumped out of the building, truthfully, you know, came out of nowhere with what he's done this off season from a leadership standpoint. So yeah, super excited to have those two guys in that receiving core. And, and obviously I mentioned Evan Vasilega at, at the H back spot and having a guy that's, you know, six, three, two twenty five, and runs well, can run all the routes and, and, but he's not scared. You know, he's from Thunder Bay. So he's, a little, he's got a little, <laughs> little toughness in him. And a little mean streak. <laughs> yeah. He likes to whack people too. And, and having, you know, um, having that ability makes him, you know, potentially a pretty special player. And, and we got a really good young receiving core, truthfully. Uh, you know, it's a position group that we're really excited to see, you know, some guys that are going into their second year. Um, with Tyler Tierney, Marcus Hogel, um, uh, take those next steps. The guy going into his third year, Romel Samuel Slocum, we, you know, he had a couple of flashes towards the end of last year. And they've all had really, really good been motivated and and so you know it's it's time for some guys to step up but there's certainly it's a talented group uh as we talk about the offense we'll we'll kind of transition to the trenches and your offensive line play um obviously with your pedigree and coaching trenches is a big big aspect and you guys like to get after at the point of attack um what can we expect from your your squad this year your five i guess that are going to be starting week one against ottawa well, the the nice thing is the group of five that that we expect to be starting is the group of five that finished last year, and mm-hmm. um, being a younger group, um, any younger group in the sense that like there was a few guys that you know are now kind of going into their fourth year, but they were young in the sense that you know twenty twenty one we we had a you know pretty veteran group still with Greg Brand and the Curtis twins and Spencer Andrews and and we you know. We worked from the time I took the program over, and I mean, 2019 and 2020, you know, is, is the lost year there, but because uh, it would have been a pretty good one for us. But we, we evolved to, you know, never going to, you know, Western always seems to year in, year out, and, and Queen certainly has a very good old line now. But, you know, we we evolved, in in my belief, and in, in not rose-colored glasses to, to having one of the top three old lines in the conference for for two or three years going there, and, and that's where we want to get back to. And, and uh, it's a gritty group. Um, it's a group that worked extremely hard in the weight room um, this off season, um, you know, based on the mentality that truthfully, um, you know, we always want, you know, we want to be a balanced offense and whether balance means, you know, 60% run 40% pass vice versa or 50, 50 um, at the end of the day, if you look at the most successful teams right now on a, from a consistent standpoint, you know, it's the teams that, that ultimately when they, when it comes down to brass tacks, they got they can, they can run the football. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, you know, in a lot of our offense, you know, from a pass perspective comes off of, of, you know, RPOs, um, play action, um, you know, so in order for that to work in a, from a passing concept standpoint, you got to be able to get off the rock and and displace some people. And so that's been a real big focus this off season. Um, I'm really excited for this group uh, to, to take that next step. I think there's, there's some talent there. Um, you know, um, I think we're, we're good, you know, we got a good seven, seven to eight, eight, eight guy, solid group there, you know? So, mm-hmm. it's uh, you know, and it's not saying we got 15 guys in camp and it's not saying that the other seven, but they, there's some work to be done there and whether they're freshmen or just overall body composition, whatever it may be. But so, you know, it's a position certainly where we want to be physical, um, you know, but we're going to have to knock on wood and have a little lady luck and, and stay healthy too, because I think if we can stay healthy and keep, keep that group together, um, you know, I think it could be a very good offensive line. Um, and then, and in turn, that'll help, you know, the backfield. Cause I think the one thing last year, you know, our run game was substandard and subpar from uh, my perspective. And uh, you know, and, and so, you know, it, it's exciting because Anthony Miller is kind of the returning veteran back and he's in there from a solo perspective, um, you know, Nick Sua is, he's, he's uh, doing a master's at Calgary and he's gone to play for the dinos and that's great for him continuing his education and, and getting another experience. Um, but Anthony is, 
Anthony could be special. He's just, he, it's time for him to, to have that breakout year. Um, but we had a really good year uh, recruiting uh, running backs as well. And we landed uh, you know, the top player in the region here in Quentin Springer out of Jacob Hessler. And, and he's, he's explosive. He's explosive. Uh, you know, he can hit those 60 yard runs and he's a physical kid for, for coming out of high school. And, and, you know, his big thing is just get grasped in the playbook. And as, as long as he can do that. And um, I think he's a kid that, that might have a little bit of a splash this year too. And then we had a transfer come from St. FX, Adrian Henry. Um, he was backing up Malcolm Bussey and, and decided he's from Brantford, decided to come closer to home. And we had recruited him coming out of high school. So um, yeah. So, and, and, you know, overall that group's uh I'm excited to see what that group can do, you know, and, and, and step up. And, and, uh, and obviously a key part of that is the offensive line. Switching gears here a little bit, going to the defensive side of the ball. You were a team that liked to get after last year. I think you finished top three in, in tackles per game in the OUA. What, what can we expect? What can fans expect out of the Waterloo defense this year? And kind of what are you looking forward with to with that group? Well, excited, uh, you know, for that, you know, the front seven, I think is a pretty solid group. Um, you know, from a defensive line perspective, um, we, we've, you know, evolved and, and we got some young guys that were in their first year last year that like Marcus Ola, who we previously spoke about and Divine Ugo, um, who've had good off seasons. Um, we have some good, solid veteran leadership there in, in Tyson Hergott, who he had a really good year last year and, and mm -hmm. uh, went to the East West Bowl and did well. Trayvon Halstead's back and went to the East West Bowl and did well. And, um, you know, another guy that we really want to see take the next step. He started just because he's a, he's a, but he he's got talent. He's just got to find that demon in him. Is is Caden Jajal, and Caden is a big, you know, six four two two ninety kid that, you know, has some twitch in him, and and you know demands double teams, and and so yeah, I, I'm excited about the D line, um, and and certainly excited about the linebacking core. I think. You know, if, if I look overall at, you know, maybe the strongest position group on our team is our, our linebacking core. Um, you know, we had uh, last year, um, you know, Keyshawn Bowen really came into his own towards the end of the year. Uh, Jethro Oleko and uh, a big boost, you know, obviously losing the Jack Hinsberger, um, you know, sucks, but, you know, we, James Hinsberger, his, his younger brother's back <laughs> off of ACL. He missed last year entirely. And, he just uh, he had, he was on a work term in 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 Boston for his engineering program. He's he's uh, doing real well at engineering. He's the top student male athlete uh, on campus here. He had a ninety seven point one percent average in civil engineering. Plus, guy doesn't miss a, a you know he's six three two twenty and runs like a deer. And and certainly uh, excited to get him back. Really excited. He had a great freshman year and and. Uh, so, and, and then there's lots of depth there, you know, Jack Andrews is back for, I think his 14th year. Um, he's like Tommy boy. Um, and, uh, but he's, he's a playmaker. Um, Kalen Fraser, like we got, a, it, there's a lot of depth and, and we uh, got a really good recruit coming from uh, Ann Meyer high school in Niagara Falls and Arden Martinez. He's a, a big kid, you know, six, three, six, four, 230 pound and can also run well too. And um, yeah, I re really, you know, that front seven is going to need to, to get pressure and, and certainly, you know, we want to keep it simple so that they can play fast. Um, and then, you know, in the secondary, we got Diego Arenas who returns after his freshman year playing free safety and, and in a more, you know, and, and being truthful, we need uh, Jordan Travis is back who, who had a good year uh, in 2021. He broke his leg against Guelph the second game of the season last year. So didn't really get to see much from him. Uh, he's back as well. So, um, but we're going to have a couple guys that need to step up and, and, you know, I think it's, you know, that group's the group that really needs to raise the level of their play um, in the secondary. And, and hopefully that can, you know, the, the front seven can benefit them in that regard. Um, excited about, you know, the defense uh, coach DA coach Darrell Adams returns as the DC, uh, but, was able to make some hires this off season. We didn't really announce anything, but, uh, but we have Jesse Alexander coaching the linebackers and he's going to be our special teams coordinator. And, and then uh, Jerome Erdman came over from Simon Fraser. He was the DC there, but once the program folded, um, he wanted to keep his, uh, you know, keep his foot in the door coaching. So we were able to get Jerome over and he's got a plethora of experience in, in everything on that side of the ball. And so I think we've really, uh, you know, shaped up our defensive staff and and I'm excited for you know and those guys are all here and you know obviously Dave's a full full-time guy 
but Jesse and uh, and Jerome were here in a full time capacity during the season, so um, they'll be here every day, all day, and and that's a nice thing for for the defensive players. And yeah, I'm, I'm you know um, obviously uh, we don't we don't want to get into though. I don't I don't think we're capable of getting into those you know 45, 42 uh, shootouts. Uh, you know, it, it's a difficult thing when you don't have number five back there. But uh, I certainly think we can put points on the board. And, you know, I think our defense is is, is really, uh, you know, has an opportunity to take some leaps and bounds. So, you know, obviously you're always going to get positivity out of me, fellas. It's uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's that time of the year. And so uh, I'm super excited just because it's a really great, good group of young men. And, and they've really bought into our, our culture shift and, and the way they work. And, and I think that... Uh, when you have that going on, um, it, it has to result in good things, really, truthfully. And and so I'm excited for uh, for what lays ahead, that's for sure. It's almost like the chicken and the egg, right? Does the good front seven help the secondary or does a good secondary help the front seven? I, I think uh, the nice thing with the training camps and the uh, crossover practices, you guys will get to raise your level before you even head into that first regular season game. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And then, you know, special teams will be um, good. We Cole Crissette's back. So that's a big boost. He's, you know, he's a top kicker. So it's nice to have, uh, have his leg and, and understand that we can change the field and everything of that sort. But, you know, I think the biggest thing for us this year is, is reflecting back and evaluating and all that stuff from, from 2022 is that, you know, we didn't play complimentary to football, uh, complimentary, sorry, complimentary football, um, and what I mean by that is when the offense played well, the defense didn't play that great and vice versa. And, and so, and I, I think it's common sense and people, well, of course it is coach, you know, people be saying, but, but truth be told, like, you know, um, it's, it's important to have that continuity between the O and the D. And, and so, you know, this year uh, I'm taking a step back from, I'm not going to be the offensive coordinator anymore. And coach Brendan Conway is going to take that role um, we kind of co-coordinated last year from a transition standpoint and certainly the offense is staying in, you know, it's kind of my offense, our, our offense, but, uh, but I'm excited, you know, sometimes what you get with, with, when the head coach is in OC is, is, is the defensive guys kind of, I wouldn't say they get jaded, but you know, they, you know, Hey, the head coach is always with the offense. And so, you know, there was time for, it's time for a change, right? Like you can't uh, keep, doing things the same way. And so I'm excited and it's given me a new, new energy to kind of be around just the overarching head coach. And, and this is a new thing for me as a head coach, because I've always been the, the OC while being the head coach here. So I'm excited to be able to kind of dip my toes on the defensive side of the ball, special teams. I joked around with the guys because everyone knows that I like trick plays. So I, I just <laughs> I'm a head coach and trick play coordinator. So um, that's a great title to have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about some trick plays for defense. So I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure how it works, but I'm, try, I'm, I'm wrapping my head around some trick. If plays you let Connor people. talk to you for a bit longer. I think he might talk you into a few double corner blitzes here or there. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. The old, the old Madden play shoot both your corners and leave the flats wide open. That seems to work yeah. every time I play Madden online, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So no one will ever see it coming from the field corner, but uh... <laughs> that's a long yeah. blitz for a field corner. Yeah, generally the field corner is a little bit slower too. So sure. <laughs> but uh, coach, I, I want to circle back to the uh, James Hinsberger average piece that you'd mentioned, how he's the top athlete at Waterloo. Uh, when, obviously, you guys are a fantastic academic school and you guys carry that pedigree into your football program. Uh, what extra supports has there been in place for your team and uh, what does that say to the commitment of your players to have someone, not just his work ethic, but others as well. So uh, uh, yeah. to keep that such average in an esteem program like that. Yeah. You know, the, uh, the you know, academic all Canadian breakfast, the, the Dean of engineering asked, asked James, you know, how do you do it? And he just said, you know, I stay up late and I wake up early. I work hard kind of like he's a motivated guy. Right. And people don't understand how, how can he do that along with, you know, being a high level football player, but, you know, different strokes for different folks. But the big thing for us um, from a supportive standpoint, you know, um, we have a, you know, full-time uh, academic support wellness coordinator in, in Marshall Bingaman, who 
um, you know, was a coach here when I played here and he's a coach when I first started and coaching, but his role now has shifted off the field and, and, you know, in a full-time capacity, helping our football players, you know, he helps other, other programs in the department as well, but um, you know, he helps our guys, you know, every Monday we, you know, we do, um, our academic stuff is different. Some, some schools will have study hall, and but our, our academic programming is based on time management. So all of our players meet on a weekly basis on Mondays and they map out their week. And, and, you know, we, we go, it's based on a philosophy of the four F's and, and that's like your f- future, which is academics, okay. Football, family, and friends. And, and ultimately we try to find a balance uh, over a, calendar year you know so during the football season the focus is going to be future and football right and, and certainly you see your family on the weekend and be your friends saturday night after big wins and but you know the focus is then and then you know it's still got there's still going to be focus on football in the off season but you're always focusing on your future academic piece but now maybe in the off season you know that's where you can focus a little bit more on your family your friends all that kind of stuff so we try to find a balance with those four things that, you know, ultimately fills a, you know, fills a graph that's 25% each over a calendar year um, with knowing certain months. And then uh, we're, we're very fortunate with, with our um, central administration and our athletic department um, that uh, we uh, support our, our student athletes um, with five hours of tutoring per course per term. So oh, wow. each of our guys can access tutoring um, that's paid for by the athletic department, fundraised, and also internal money um, because uh, Waterloo prides itself on that academic standard. And, and you know, I'm very proud to say that, you know, shoot, two years ago, our team average was 76.8%. We had 103 um, student athletes, you know, 103, you know, males that are age 17 to 23 years old. And we're able to have that type of an average. I think we're, we're doing pretty damn good. Um, that same year, we had 41 academic all Canadians, which was a record um, for us. And then this past year, we went down a little bit, you know, so we had a 75.3% overall team average and we had uh, 20, uh, 27 academic all Canadians. So, um, you know, ultimately when you look at it, and certainly team success uh, breeds opportunities uh, to get drafted and, and go play in the CFL but, you know, when when you look at the life expectancy, the law of averages, and, and it's two and a half, 2.7 years, um, you know, you, you got to make sure. And, and even still in a good year, we're getting, you know, four guys drafted most years, maybe one or two. You know, you look at an incoming recruiting class of 30 guys plus. And, and so how many guys, you know, we want everyone to strive for the stars and, and chase their dreams and be a pro athlete. But at the same time, um, is that a reality for everybody? And and so we want to set them up for success um, later on in life so that, you know, ultimately they can go out and make a lot of money and then I can pick up the phone and call them and ask them to donate it back to us. <laughs> hey, I think I got one of those letters in the mail today, actually. <laughs> so. Uh, no, but that's, that's fantastic. And uh, it's always a pleasure to meet with you, coach. Uh, looking forward to seeing how you guys do this year. Thanks again for joining us. It's uh, we've taken up quite a bit of your time and it's a precious time as we get here uh, into the training camp hours. Um, yeah, so no, thank all, you very much for taking it. To, for all us. good. I appreciate, uh, appreciate you guys doing this Wade and Connor and, and certainly looking forward to the season. And, and certainly we have high, high expectations here at Waterloo and, and all we're going to worry about is uh, what we got here internally and not, not listen to any noise on the outside because everybody's betting against us and, and that's just fine. I'm excited to see where you guys go this year, coach. Good luck. All the best through camp with health wise. Uh, thank you very much again. All right. Thank Thanks you so guys. Much. Take care. All right. Talk to you.